form and variance of Maxwell's equations. In fact, this video really isn't needed if you want to understand and implement transformation optics, and you're free to move on to the next video and skip this. However, all of this depends on this all-important property of Maxwell's equations called form and variance. And so for a deeper understanding, here is the video that presents this. And in a nutshell, here's what it is. In any coordinate system, Maxwell's equations look the same. The form is the same. So we can write the standard Maxwell's equations in Cartesian coordinates, and it looks this way. We could write Maxwell's equations in cylindrical coordinates, and it looks this way. We could write Maxwell's equations in spherical coordinates, and it looks this way. We could write Maxwell's equations in Martian coordinates. That doesn't even exist, but you know what? If it did, Maxwell's equations would still look this way. Maxwell's equations look the same no matter what coordinate system we write them in. That's the all important property of Maxwell's equations. So we can transform from one coordinate system to another and Maxwell's equations do not change. They have the same form in every single coordinate system. Here's the all important consequence of this. If we apply a coordinate transform to Maxwell's equations, and here we've done that. So the little prime superscript means that we're in some other coordinate system. Imagine we go back. All of the math associated with that transform can be lumped into and absorbed into the permittivity and permeability, the material properties terms. And that's the property that lets transformation optics work. So what we've done here, we started in some weird transform system. We then went back and we have this strange permeability and permittivity. But if we could somehow figure out how to build a device that exhibited that permittivity and permeability, our fields and waves would look as they did in the original coordinate system, as long as they're embedded in this new mu and epsilon. So if in this strange system, the waves were bending and twisting in some way that we wanted them to, well, back in standard X, Y, Z, or whatever coordinate system we're working in, and we had a device made of this permeability and permittivity, the waves would do the exact same thing. And so our transformation optics device would be designed at that point. So here we're looking at the permeability and permittivity as an operation. In our minds, we're thinking of this as a function. We know the value at different points. That's a function, right? Yes, it is. But from the Maxwell's equations perspective, it's an operation happening to the functions, which are the electric and magnetic field. It's doing a point by point multiplication on them. And we now know how we can use this Jacobian matrix to transform operations. And that's what I'm showing here. And so if you Google transformation optics, these are the equations that come up. And really this just comes out of coordinate transformation theory and nothing else. Let's go ahead and actually prove that Maxwell's equations are form invariant. So what we've done, we've grabbed Faraday's law. And so of course we need to do this with both curl equations, but since they look the same, we can prove this of one of the equations and the other equation would just be obvious that it is also form invariant. So this is what we're trying to prove. We have Faraday's law just in our standard X, Y, Z, and it looks like this, and it needs to look the exact same way when we transform to another coordinate system. So let's go back and remember from our video when we talked about Jacobians and how we do transforms, how we transform vector functions and operations. And these first two equations were transforming the electric and magnetic field vector functions from our original coordinate system to our transform, uh, transformed coordinate system. And we do that using the transpose of our Jacobian, the, and we pre-divide by that. And then we're looking here at the permeability as an operation. It's an operation happening onto the magnetic field. So this is not a function, it's an operation in the context of that equation. 
And so it is transformed using our Jacobi in this way, and we get the permeability tensor in our transform, transformed coordinate system. Not sure why I can't say that word. The last thing we'll do before we go to the next slide is take these equations and solve them for the terms in the original coordinate system, because on the next slide, we'll substitute those up into this equation. And so all we're doing is bringing the Jacobian over to the other side of the equation and solving for those functions in the original coordinate system. So we'll use these on the next slide. So here we are with Faraday's law in our original coordinate system. So what we can do, we can substitute in the expression of the original field with our transform field. And it's gonna to have to carry along this Jacobian matrix with it, but we substitute that in. We have a similar expression for our permeability tensor. And last, we have a similar expression for the magnetic field. So we have three substitutions. When we just blindly do that, this is where we end up. The next thing we'll do is we'll simplify this and we'll bring all of those operations over to the left. And notice we've grouped all of these Jacobians and things with that curl operation. So let's remember how we transform operations. And this is the expression using the Jacobian of how we would transform the operation F into our transform coordinate system. Well, if we look at the equation we just derived, this is the expression for transforming that curl operation to the transform coordinate system. So we can go ahead and just do that. That is the curl operation in the transform coordinate system. So this is the final equation, and that's what we initially needed to prove that our that Faraday's law in the original coordinate system looks the exact same way as it does in the transformed coordinate system. So we've proven that Faraday's law anyway, the one of the curl equations is form invariant, and the other curl equation follows the exact same math. So Maxwell's equations are form invariant. I just wanna illustrate the proof we went through with a very simple example. This example is not another proof. It's not adequate to prove, but eh, it kind of drives us home, I think. So we start off with Faraday's law again, and let's transform this with a very simple transform. All we're doing is scaling space by this factor A. So our transform coordinate system is simply the original coordinate system times that factor A. When that's the case, our electric field, our permeability tensor, and our magnetic field in the transform space look the same way. Right, we end up just writing an A times R in this argument, but we don't have to write the A there. So that can drop out and we really left off, left with the same expressions, just with an R prime in here. Now the curl operation, when we're scaling space, it's going to have an A term multiplying each of these denominators in the partial derivatives, which we can just factor to the outside. And now we have the primes here indicating this is our transform coordinate system. So it's our curl operation here that has changed a little bit. That makes sense. The math is associated with the curl operation. But what we can do is move that factor A anywhere. Let's associate it with the permeability. And we're back to the same equation again, but now with the permeability scaled by a factor A. But Faraday's law has the same form that it did before just a different permeability tensor. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.